this morning I'm talking about a camera which you might easily find in a car boot cell or more likely an antique shop or junk centre or yes yeah, similar and I'm talking about a 1915 to 1924 Kodak. Now the Kodak names are often quite long um, although Brownie is a short name we often have before the Brownie quite a long name like for instance I have here a number 2A folding autographic Brownie so not just a Kodak but a number 2A folding aut aut autographic Brownie now Kodak often used numbers and quite often one and one a with their brownies and um, box cameras and it can be a little bit confusing and the film sizes are also a tiny bit confusing where Kodak often started from a hundred and uh, 120 film I think was the 20th type of film they used might be wrong there I'm sure someone will pick me up this camera uses type 116 film and 116 was quite a popular Kodak film and let's have a look at this camera it's a folding camera and it would have been considered to be quite a small camera they did do smaller cameras, for example, the Vest camera. This folds out here. You have this in, um, lever here, which helps to fold it out. And there we have the camera, okay. And to fully extend it, you have to extend it until it clicks. These would have been moderately basic cameras, but I say basic, these were sort of mid-range cameras. They would have been moderately expensive and they do give you a number of options. You have some limiting focusing down here, which you would operate like so, I think. Oh, to alter the focusing, you have a little button on the side here and you alter the focusing accordingly here you have quite an ingenious viewfinder you would have looked at the camera from the race look down and you have you can alter it for that is in portrait mode if I go into landscape I simply move this round okay this moves around so I've got portrait landscape and it's quite uh, interesting it's a cross shape so you've got both views there quite interesting to think that the design very much considered that people would be using it in two ways the clever thing about this camera and the thing that Kodak made a lot of was what they called the autograph mode and on the back here we have a little scriber now it's the scriber which is often missing on these cameras and if you are looking at for a autograph camera and find a scriber with it that is a bonus what happened you've got this window on the camera and this window When you open the window, you got the back of the film exposed. When I say exposed, it wasn't letting light in, but you got, and what happened there, you had a sort of carbon um, covering. Well, and it wasn't quite carbon, but you had a covering on the film. And you could write on your film something like Blackpool 19817, whatever you could write on the back of your film and then on the negative you would have information so this was a very clever thing in um, 1915 and the autograph feature was incredibly popular i think the film was a little bit extra and to have it printed it was a little bit extra but it was you could say it was the very early metadata okay and 
you quite often find this on, as I said, it was a sort of slightly upmarket version of the Kodak cameras of the day. And remember Kodaks were cutting edge because it was George Eastman who had introduced the whole idea of celluloid film, of plastic coated film. It's before then films were um, glass plates. And the big thing about Kodak was its film manufacturing. It made millions and millions of cameras throughout the world, in particular in Rochester, New York, but also in uh, North London, in Hendon, and across the world. But its chief manufacturing process was film. The sort of cameras were almost secondary to support the film, um, but film was the major Having said that, the Kodak name was incredibly important. We forget now that the Kodak name was equivalent to Google in its time. Again, looking back on the camera, we have a number of apertures here. We have a, we have a four shutter speeds. We have a 25th of a second. We have a 50th of a second. And we have a hundredth of a second. We have a number of shutter speeds, we have a 25th of a second, we have a 50th and we have 125th. We also have a bulb and T. Now bulb is when you leave the shutter down, but T was always interesting because what T enables you to do is it opens, there's the shutter, it's open, you make your exposure, come back and you close the shutter. So if you see T on the early camera, um, I think it was for time, but it meant you could set the shutter, go away and come back. Quite often get these in moderately good condition. The shame about them are, is that 126, I think was discontinued back in 1952. So they are very few 126, sorry, 116 films about, um, some people do cut the film and make the film fit, but that is quite complicated to do. But they are nice things to look at. They are moderately cheap. I wouldn't pay over £20 for one of these. Um, do you see them on the internet for more than £20, but for a camera you can't actually use, I can't personally see the spend, um, reason for spending more on them. They are interesting to look at, interesting part of history. If you find one, it's worth adding to your collection if you have a collection. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.